and thank you for joining me for another quick uh, card magic class. Uh, the one I want to show you today is going to be a little bit more advanced than the ones I've showed you in the past, but as always with enough practice you should be able to get it. Once again, simple deck of cards. Now, in case you didn't know this, there are 52 cards in every deck. Four suits, heart, diamond, spade, and club. For this particular trick, you're going to take your 52 cards and you're going to divide it into four piles, which would be 13 cards in each pile. But before you do that, you want to ask your audience member to pick a number from 1 to 13. And let's say they pick 8. So you're going to give them the eighth card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is going to be their card. I'll show it to the camera, but I'm going to put it off to the side because we don't need it anymore for the rest of the trick. So that is going to be their card. So we don't need that right now, so I'm just going to put that off to the side. Now, as I said, we're going to divide this into four even piles of 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the first pile will only have 12 because that's the 13th card. The rest of them will have 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We can straighten this out a little bit. So now we have four piles, one of twelve, the other of thirteen. The others of thirteen. Now you're gonna ask your audience member to pick any two piles that they'd like. They can they have free choice here. Let's say they pick these two. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn both of those piles so they are face up on the table. And for the sake of this, I'll switch those two around. So we have face down, face up, face down, and then face up. What you're going to do now is you're going to take one of the face up piles and then this face down pile and you're going to shuffle the cards together. Now, you don't have to use a shuffle like this if you want to smush them together as long as something gets turned over or whatever then that's fine. And if you look, it's just a jumbled mess, and this is intentional. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to take this pile and this pile, and you're going to shuffle them together like that. So, if you look now, we have once again a jumbled pile. One more time, we shuffle together like this. Now, if I turn this over, I leave this here. You would ask your audience member, what is the suit of the card that they had? Was it a diamond, club, spade, or heart? Their circumstance of being told that it was a heart. So we put this right there and we take it off. What it's going to do is it's going to make all of the cards in the deck are going to be facing the same way, except with the help of that, all of the hearts have actually now gone face up on in the pile. But what's tricky or different about this is only the hearts are face up, but they also go in order. There's the king, there's the queen, there is the jack, the ten, the nine, the eight, the seven, and then there's a space, the five, the four, the three, the two, and then the ace. And notice how I said that there was a space because there was one heart missing because the one card that I put down in advance should be the six of hearts. Now, as always, how does this trick work? Well, I know I've been mentioning that I use the blue deck to set cards up in advance or the deck in advance. This circumstance, I went with the red one. So this is another trick where the deck is set up in advance. So if you're gonna do a performance, I'd recommend that you start off with this one. And here's how you do it. You're gonna take all of your hearts like I have here and you're gonna make sure that they go in order. So king, queen, jack, 10, whoops, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and then the ace. So if you look quickly, it doesn't matter if it's flipped, but the aces, uh, the, excuse me, the hearts are all in order. And these are going to go at the top of the deck. 
So the deck is really just a random mix and then all of the hearts are together at the top of the deck. Your audience member picks any number from 1 to 13. You want to limit them to 1 to 13 so they're forced to pick a heart. Now you can do this with any suit. You can put all the spades, the clubs, diamonds, it doesn't matter as long as they're all the same suit and they go in order and they put them at the top of the deck in advance. Let's say they pick three. So this circumstance, and I'll show the camera as well, it happens to be the three of hearts. So I'm going to put that off to the side. Now is a matter of putting them into the four piles. So as I said, four piles of 13, except the first one has to be 12 because that's the 13th card. You have to make sure the first pile only has 12 because if it has more than that, you're going to get a random extra card in there. So make sure there's only 12 in the first pile. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there's your 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now, just for the sake of modeling, I am going to just remind you and show you that the first pile is all of the hearts with no extra cards added in. So now the audience has free choice. They can pick any two piles they want. If they pick any combination of these, you're fine. Just turn them over. So let's say they pick these two. So then you would turn them over. You can switch like I did, but you really don't have to. Now let's say you tell your audience they can pick any two piles they want, and they pick these two. So here's what you do. You just turn the other two over. You just leave those two face down. You always want to leave this pile face down. Never turn that pile over. That one always remains face down. So I'll switch again. It's, I think it's better to do face down, face up, face down, face up, but it's your choice. Just remember where the hearts are. You want to take your face up pile, your face down pile, and without turning it over, you can shuffle them together. Now, you can do a riffle shuffle like I'm doing, but honestly, if you just like, you know, kind of just, you know, mix the cards in however you want, it, it doesn't really matter as long as they get all mixed up and you really don't want to change the order. So now you have all jumbled cards but if you turn it over really it's only the 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 hearts that are like this now here's what you want to do now you don't want to just shuffle this pile in like this what you want to do is discreetly turn this pile over so the hearts are going to be the ones that are face up but your audience doesn't need to know that so you take these you can shuffle that in so now it's all face down the hearts are still face up but now what your audience is going to see is it just looks like a random jumbled mess. Now one more pile to shuffle in. Just kind of riffle through and get them put in however you want. So now they're all going to be like this. So we put this face down. Now I like to add a little bit of, and not illusion, but extra to it. You can take the card, you can flick it on the pile. It, it doesn't do anything, obviously, because all the hearts are already face up. But then this is when you ask them. Diamond heart, club or spade. You already know the answer to this question, okay? But you want to make your audience think that you don't. So then they tell you heart. So you can do two things here. You can do a spread, kind of like I showed before, or you just go through and you say all of the cards are face down except the hearts. And you can go through and you can see there's one, there's two, there's the four, there's the five. You can go all the way through. Because what I like to do, especially for this, is the way that it's set up, is now all the cards are fairly evenly distributed in front of you, but they still go in order. So there's the ace, the two, the four, the five, the six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, and king. And of course, there's one heart missing, which you've known what it is right now in front of you because it's missing, but you may have known it from how it was set up in advance anyway, which is going to be your audience's card, the three of hearts. But just again, there's the ace, two, I'll put the three here, the four, the five, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine, the ten, jack, queen, and king. Just make sure that that's just set up in advance. This one may take a little bit longer to learn how to do, but as always, with practice, you should be able to get it to work. But that's a more intermediate uh, card trick that I know. 
I've learned from watching various videos and looking at different magicians about it. But that's a good one that I usually like to start a performance with because the deck's already set up and you really get your audience off guard with that one. Thank you again for um, coming to learn some card magic tricks or just watch me do them or whatever. This is the sixth one and hopefully maybe becoming a series of them at this point. But I like to alternate for no other reason, but we have our, we had our red decks before or back to the blue deck. So same thing as always, you just need a deck of cards. Now, believe it or not, this time the deck is not going to be set up in advance. And to prove it, I'm going to actually shuffle. And now you, have, you can have your audience member shuffle as well. It really doesn't matter. But I will do the shuffling here. Now, here's how this trick usually likes to go. I will show the audience member in advance that the deck really is shuffled. As you can see when I go through, this really is shuffled. Then I'm going to ask your audience, the audience member, two cards. Do you want them face up or face down? For this circumstance, I'll put them off to the side. I'll show them to the camera, but they're going to want them face up. So I'm going to grab that card and I'm going to grab that card. So these are the two cards that the audience member is, is going to get. And for the sake of this, they'll, they'll keep them face up and I'll just show them to the camera now. Those are the two cards for the audience member. So I'm going to put those off to the side. Now, normally this circumstance, okay, what, what I would do is I would put some cards on the table like this, and then I would actually hand the deck to the audience member and tell them to put as many cards down as they want. This usually confuses them because they don't usually get to handle it, but I'll just keep doing it this time. I'm going to keep putting cards down and then they say to stop there. Okay. Now you're going to take the deck. And like I've showed you before, you break into two different piles. Now, you don't want to remind your audience member at this point that they really could have stopped at any point. And they happen to stop on a red jack and a red queen. Which, if you may remember before, when I showed two cards to the camera, they happened to be a red queen and a red jack. And as a reminder, your audience member could have stopped at any point. And this trick really does not require any setup in advance. But let me explain how it's done. Let me do this actually one more time for you. And this time, I'm just going to put the two cards down in advance. I won't show them to the camera until the very end. But the deck is shuffled. As you can see, showing again, that it really is. Let me do one more. One more shuffle, actually. Okay. It really is shuffled, as you can see here. So now let's say the audience chooses face down. Like, okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm looking for two cards or just grabbing two cards and I'm going to give the audience member. I'm going to keep those over to the side. And once again, I tell them, or you can do it, you can hand them, model for them how to do it, and they say, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. And sometimes you say, do you want any more? And they'll say, yes, sure, and you add two more. It doesn't really matter. You have your two piles that you can now break this into. And your audience this time happened to stop on a red three and a red six. There's 52 cards in the deck, so there's two different red threes, the heart and the diamond, and there's two different red sixes, the heart and the diamond. Uh, same thing with black cards, there's spades, and then there's clubs. But this time, I put down two cards in advance before this started. They can be called your prediction cards, whatever you want to call them. And the two cards that I put down happen to be a red three and a red six, meaning that I have predicted or in this circumstance, you would have predicted where the audience stopped. Now, how does this trick work? Because it really is random. The deck can be randomly shuffled. And here's what you do. You can shuffle it. Your audience can shuffle it. Your audience can put the deck in any order that they want. That works too. It really doesn't matter. But when you go through and you're showing the audience like this, see the deck is shoveled. You're actually looking for two cards. And what you're looking for is going to be random each time. Let me show you. So you're going through 
the different cards in the deck. And what you're doing is you're going to be looking for the two cards on the very end. So right here in this circumstance, see how the end two cards are a black king and a red nine? So I see king of clubs and nine of diamonds. So I'm thinking black king, red nine. So now you're going to give the audience their two cards, which they seem or they should interpret as you're, giving, you're going through the deck and you're randomly giving them two cards. But I'm thinking black king, red nine. So there's the red nine. And now I'm looking for going through and I'm looking for a black king. There's the black king. So I put those two cards down in advance. So if we turn this over, there's the black king. There's the red knight. If you may remember from before, the two cards at the top are important. And here's why you want to model what to do first. Because at this point, if you were to say, put cards down like I am, there's the black king, there's the red knight. It doesn't matter how many cards your audience member puts down because the two important cards are already on the table. But let's say they decide to go up to, you know, there. Okay, great. So you have your one deck and you're going to break into two piles again. If you can ask them how many to count by, as long as you end up alternating the last two cards, that's all that's important. But for this circumstance, we're just going to put two cards down at a time, just like this. And have done correctly, the last two cards that you put down <coughs> are the red nine and the black king. Meaning that your prediction before the trick even started is going to match what the audience has. And I've done this before at performances in school. And this trick, I must say, out of all of them, really gets the most reaction out of people. Because they have no idea how you manage to perfectly predict their cards. But I'll do this one more time in advance. Look, sir, I'll do this one more time, not in advance. We're not setting the deck up in advance. I'll do this one more time. I'll do it sort of in real time. So you can shuffle, your audience can shuffle, your audience can put the cards in any order that they want. It, it works no matter what. You show your audience. Okay. This really is a shuffle deck. Okay. And then they're going to get two cards. I will put them face down this time. I'm going through. I'll put that one down and I will put that one down over here. Okay. And you give them the deck or you can do it and they can tell you when to stop. And you stop there. Take your cards. Two piles. Kind of worked out coincidentally like this this time. And they happen to stop on a jack and another jack. Coincidence, but that's just kind of what happened. But if you may remember, there were two cards that were put down in advance as prediction cards, and both of them happened to be the other two jacks. So remember, when you do this, you want to remember the two cards at the very end, no matter what they end up being. This time, they both happen to be two jacks. When you fan through, or you're, you have your audience do, it doesn't matter. You're looking for the two cards at the very end. It would be in your left hand. So black nine, black queen. Okay, you go through. You're looking for black nine, black queen, or whatever they may end up being. They can be anywhere. There's the black queen. And there's the black nine. Put those up there one more time. They, let's say that you give them them and they just start dropping cards like that, which is fine. Because then you can actually mix it up and you'd be like, okay, I'm going to put down four cards at a time. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you're going to start to run out of cards, which is perfect because now you only have two left and you can just alternate like that. Because it doesn't matter how many you put down as long as the last two cards are the ones that match and have done correctly. There's the queen. I'll just switch those right there. And there is the nine. Another pretty simple trick. You can really fool people with this one. Just pay attention to the cards um, when you're showing them that it's not shuffled. And that's pretty much all you need. So I thank you again for checking out um, another card trick. Once again, if you practice, I really do wish you well. And Fool your friends, fool your family, anyone you want. Simple to learn. You really get some good reactions out of it if you do it correctly. Uh, that's all I have for this one. So, as always, 
Thank you for watching.